Hey, what's up everyone? Darkwing Dad here. Uh, are you a current Iron Man builder and you're wondering different ways how to wire the Repulsar in your hand blasters? Maybe something like this and you want them to turn on and off without having to push buttons or do crazy amounts of wiring or Arduinos or anything like that? Well, I'll show you how right now. Let's go. <laughs> Once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning into today's video. As promised, I said I was going to have some electronics updates, and although it might not be as much as I originally said, I got a lot of projects going on, but I'm still keeping the videos coming for you and you and you. So here they are. So today we're going to be covering uh, the hand repulsor um, for the Iron Man War Machine, whatever suit you want to do. The greatest thing about this is you don't have to worry about getting any code. Uh, there's no boards. Uh, there's no crazy wiring. You don't need to push buttons and flip switches and do all this crazy stuff. It's something very simple that you are going to put all the components in your hand and it's going to work just like that. Uh, very easy little setups. So what I'm going to do is actually pop this glove off, explain how the whole process works how it's wired and how you can do it today if you want if you have all this stuff you probably don't so you're gonna have to order some stuff but let me get this glove off and i'll show you guys how to wire it all right so let's get up close and personal shall we everyone so this is the glove that i just took off and it is still in, in functioning form you can see that the light is turning on and off but basically what we have here is there are three components that we need one we need a power source one, we need a signal switcher, and lastly, we need the actual light. So I have two LEDs in mine. Of course, you can put more in if you want, and this is just a, a rough guide to, you know, how to basically get everything set up. You can, of course, do it differently. However, I would honestly just, you know, when you get everything wired up, just kind of wire it up, uh, snip the excess as much as you can, um, and just keep everything in place with duct tape. Um, this all fits on my hand very easily. It fits nice and easy. Um, the cover goes on. And I have plenty of room to, to move everything around. I'm not hitting anything. It's still working, as you can see. Um, so, uh, you know, when it comes to printing your hand piece, just make sure that um, you know, you print it to a large enough size, you can put your hand on and off. And obviously you're gonna har wanna harness all these down. Um, but basically what we have here is we have a 12 volt mini battery. And um, I get these off Amazon. Um, these work absolutely great. They're a 23A 12 volt battery. They're nice and tiny. You can see how small they are. Um, I basically took uh, two wires, uh, a ground, and a positive and wired them off the ground in the positive, put a little bit of solder on here, wrapped them in electrical tape, and then I'm just gonna kind of tuck it off to the side, um, put some heavy duty duct tape on there and it's gonna keep it in place. The, the uh, My hand will kind of sandwich it in there and it's really not uncomfortable um, at all. Um, like I said, even with the cover on, there's, there's plenty of room. Uh, if you need to, you can print it a little bit bigger. Um, when I'm sliding it off, I kind of just have to put my finger there to you know, slide my hand off in place. But essentially right here is where I'm just gonna either take some hot glue uh, or some tape and just put it in place there. And all these wires will get trimmed down. These are way too long. We don't need them that long. Again, I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Um, so here we have our battery. And then what we're using is actually what's called a, uh, a ball bearing tilt switch. Uh, and what this does is this is a little sensor switch that has a bearing in it. Let me just get the tape off here. Okay, so there's a bearing inside here. It's a very tiny little ball bearing. And what happens is when you get it to a certain degree, that bearing slides and it touches the other end of this, which continues the circuit. So when the bearing slides to one side, there's no power going through. But then when you get it to a certain angle, it slides over and it creates it. You can actually hear the bearing. You can't hear it now, but I can actually hear it when I lift my hand up. You can hear the bearing slide and it touches the contacts and that's what turns it on and off. So this is a very easy way um, 
to really do anything where you're lifting your arm up or anything like that, um, you know, it's cool to do because you wire it to the battery and then when you get it to a certain height, it turns on and then when you lower it back to, you know, where it's not making contact, it essentially shuts off so it's not draining the battery. Um, now with this, you want to make sure you mount it in a in, in the proper place. So um, that is going to be very key. So for me, I found over in the corner of this glove, somewhere over here, and you can move it around if you need to. Um, you can see we have our power um, coming from the battery that goes into the bearing switch. And then the other side, it comes out here and connects to the two LEDs. So the red wires here are the positive. And I just use a, 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 a piece of blue patch wire. So this is connected to here. And then the ground just goes right to the LEDs. The, the power is, is what's gonna switch back and forth. So we just took the ground and connected that right to the black leads off of the LED. This is our power. Now, if you wanna use the same color wire so it's simpler, I get it. I just put this together real quick. Um, and then what I did is I just did heavy duty duct tape just to, to tape these LEDs in place. Now, if you want, you can use two more. Um, these batteries will support quite a few LEDs. If you've ever seen the arc reactors that I make, uh, I believe there are eight in there and these still light these up just fine. So these are nice little batteries to get. Uh, they can help out quite a bit. Uh, but essentially what happens, is when you raise your hand to a certain height, it turns on and then when you do it flat. So the way I have it is basically my hand is flat and then when I tilt it up, it makes it look like I'm kind of, you know, shooting the laser or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, out of my hand. So um, again, when it's flat, you can't really see, this is a terrible angle. When it's flat like this, it's not on. And then when I flip my hand up, uh, it shoots. So I'll show you real quick, um, just different ways that I kind of, mimic and make movements to get it to turn on and turn off all right so you know if you're at an event or doing something like that and you are you, you have your hand you know generally low down in this area you know you're doing whatever oh hey blah 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 you know it's not going to turn on but then the second you lift it up and go like that and i should probably not be doing this near a bar because <laughs> it's kind of hard but um, once you get your hand to a certain height it'll kick on so if it's down here you know, even if you're pointing, like say you are pointing to somebody, it's still not on. So if you're pointing like, hey, all my Iron Man fans or whatever, I don't know, whatever. Do you do that at events? I don't know. But um, it still won't turn on. It doesn't really turn on until it angles up. And then it looks like you're kind of like, you know, shooting. Now, if you wire a sound card... Um, and some audio into this, it will come on when you hold it up too. And it's not gonna turn off. It will stay on the entire time, so you can see. But then as soon as you get it flat, it shuts off. So that's why I like this, because you know you can still put your hands up like, so for me, I'm doing the arm cannons. So when I lift my hands up like this, it's not gonna be on. But the second I go like that, boom, it comes on. And if you're gonna use this feature, that's kind of what I would do, is kind of like do your hands quick, okay? So if you're gonna pretend like you're shooting, Boom. So I I think it's cool. It's it's a little trick that I came up with. Um, I think it looks better. I've seen some people with suits and these things are just constantly glowing. And to me, it's like it's supposed to be a weapon to where, you know, when you put your hand up like this, it's engaged. Um, it's just my opinion. I just think it looks better. You can move around, you can point, you can fist bump, you can do whatever you want. Then when it comes time to kill somebody, you can get, oh, okay. Maybe you don't want to kill somebody. You know what I mean. Is it weird that that whole time my head was chopped off? That's, but now there's a bar in the way. Unreal. Um, but it's a, it's a cool little um, way to, to wire this up. Um, I seen one of the guys on the Iron Man forums. He was asking like, hey, you know, how do I do it, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I've, I've had this for a while and I'm just kind of sharing the video with you. Um, and like I said, really all you need here is you need your power source. And I think these batteries really do work the best because they'll fit in this absolutely fantastic. And they will supply 12 volts of power to here. Um, your little um, uh, bearing tilt sensor. And then just, like I said, when you actually do this, all these wires, you know, you want to trim this to the exact size, okay? And don't be afraid to use things like duct tape, hot glue, 
your hand is going to be up against this. It's not going to move. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hot glue. Um, I think I'm going to do three. I think I'm going to do a third in the middle here. Um, and I'm going to keep them red and just do hot glue. And then, yeah, I'm just going to put duct tape over it. This little guy here, he's going to be hot glued in place off to the side. All these wires will be trimmed and just taped down. And then this uh, bearing sensor, uh, tilt sensor, is just going to be hot glued. Uh, these will be obviously taped with electrical tape. I just kind of wanted to show you, um, you know, you definitely want to solder all your wires here um, just to make sure your connections are the best. Right now, these are just all taped together. So um, when I actually get this whole piece done, um, I'll actually show you like a finish uh, look of how the inside of mine looks. Um, but I printed this to scale. It works really great. Works great with the uh, the fingers and everything. Um, they all fit really good. So, and I'm actually probably going to start um, doing this first, sanding the hands and everything, and working my way down because I still have quite a bit of wiring and things to do in the uh, in, in the whole chest and back region and arms and everything. So, um, I'm actually I've kind of established the fact that I'm going to start at my at the hands and work my way down. Um, but that's it for you know if you're trying to do basically like a wireless repulsor uh, in your in in your Iron Man or War Machine gloves or uh, rescue whatever suit that you're doing, I think it's a really cool way. Now, if you wanted to um, to do this where you did want to be able to turn it on and off, you would just do that with a switch. Um, so if you still wanted to use this tilt sensor where you know it turns on. Uh, as it goes on an angle, but you know, maybe you were sick and tired of it turning on when your hand goes up. You can, you know, um, wire a little switch somewhere within the hand. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that with mine, like I said, because um, these batteries are real cheap. Um, they last a pretty long time. And, uh, you know, if they die, I can just replace it in the glove. So it's not really that big of a deal. But you could, in theory, if you wanted to, put a little um, latching switch, um, I guess, somewhere. I don't know where you'd really be able to put it in the hand. Uh, where you wouldn't see it, but you can see kind of why I'm going to do more LEDs. It, I may even do two, um, so that lights up a little bit better, but um, it does light up really good, and that clear piece there is just, um, it's the punch out for the uh, the glove, um, the file that I have. Uh, it's just printed in clear, um, so that's all I did for that, but you can see how it works really good. You tilt your hand up and it turns on, it goes flat and it turns off. So um, that's just a quick video. Um, hopefully this uh, will be of help to you and will make your suit look awesome. And if it did, make sure to leave me a comment. All right, well, that's just a quick video for you guys. Um, like I said, uh, I told you I was gonna have some updates. It's not really like a suit update. I mean, yes, I'm using it in my suit, but I have so many other things going on right now uh, with videos and whatnot. Um, I am currently working on that sanding and smoothing video. I know a lot of you uh, out there, I got a lot of good feedback on the Iron War Patriot or whatever you want to call it, the uh, the second version that I did of that. And uh, everyone was like, hey, you know, thanks for the in-depth detail, this and that, and blah, blah. You have seen nothing yet. Um, I am doing a uh, the Iron Man Mark III faceplate, and I'm just doing a small piece, but I'm covering a lot of aspects on this on this mask. Um, just intricate sanding, ways to do it proper, ways that you can avoid losing definition in your um, prints. So this is more than just sanding and smoothing out your PLA, but this is the way to do it the right way without it being detrimental to your part and rounding things off or losing definition, yada, yada. So um, thank you guys for commenting on that video. Um, I do appreciate it, but a better one is just around the corner. Um, I also will have, hopefully within a week or so, uh, I have the hinge mechanism all set for the uh, War Machine Mark IV. Uh, there's a lot of trial and tribulation. Um, Basically, they only make hinges like ready to go and print for the Mark 7, the Mark 46, and the Mark 85. That's why the only people you see with motorized faceplates are basically those helmets. Um, I've seen some of the uh, the Rescue helmet with them too, but those are super close to the Mark 46, and that's why. The War Machine helmet is a lot harder. It's just got a lot more curve, so I had to do some modifications in my hinge, but I finally got it. And now I just have to wire up the servos. So um, I did use the Crashworks kit for that, but it really worked awesome. And then, like I said, I just took some hinges and modified them myself, heated them, bended them, but I finally got it working. So hopefully within the week, um, that video will come out. And I am working on the um, 
of wiring for the other things on the suit. The suit's not going to be done in May. I know I that was my original game plan. There's just way too much. I got way too much stuff going on. If you can't see, I've got my shirt is filthy. I was wet sanding a boat at uh, at work, and uh, look like I had gray hair. I had stuff all in my hair. So I was going to change my shirt, and I'm like, eh. For once, I'm not wet sanding a 3D helmet. I was wet sanding a boat. So um, I came home right away and I'm like, I'm going to throw this video together real quick because I have a really busy work week and I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get up. So I wanted to get this video out for you. Um, so that way, if you guys want to know a quick and easy way how to wire up a Repulsar, boom, you got it. And I also wanted to give you an update on some of those other videos that are be coming out. So I'm um, trying to pump out content for you guys, trying to keep you guys up to speed, help you guys out in your builds. I'm um, getting a lot of great feedback, um, not just through the YouTube page, but I got a lot of people sending me um, you know, messages on Messenger and just saying, dude, you've helped me so much. And that's really what all this channel is about, is to help you guys to be very transparent and everything, but be at the same time upfront and honest, because this is not the kind of channel where I snap my fingers and something's done. That's not how 3D printing is. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, if you think that I knock these helmets out in a day or two, you're wrong. Uh, it's weeks on weeks on weeks. Um, I Little teaser, my next project that I'm currently filming right now is a Vader helmet, and it is a ton of work. I'm printing it right now, so I've already started filming for that. And that's gonna be black, so that's gonna be a lot of wet sanding, and we're gonna be doing some lights, we're gonna hopefully be doing some voice modules, the Vader Vader breathing, and some of his um, some of his sayings. Uh, hopefully I can get the Raspberry Pi working properly on that one, so that's just a little sneak peek of things to come. But I'm babbling again um, when, I'm when I should be ending the video, but, Thank you guys, like I said, uh, for the last video. Thanks for all your feedback and comments and the thumbs up and the likes, I really appreciate it. Um, if you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. A lot more helpful tips and things uh, on the way uh, for all of your 3D prints, your builds. Uh, lots of cool stuff. You might have to deal with seeing some uh, vacation footage from my family. It's just ha us having fun. My kids like to go on the channel and see it. So I like to upload some reviews. Just like I review products, I like to review things that I do. So, But if you like seeing things from Disney and Universal, make sure you subscribe to my channel too because I have that stuff on here too. But anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Again, click that subscribe button. Give me one of these. Uh, I will leave a link in the description um, for all of the products. There's not a lot of them. There's only a couple, but I'll leave uh, I'll, uh, all the links for the products so you can buy them. And if you have a question or not sure how to wire something up, leave me a comment. You know, I always respond to you guys. So uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Later.